Today I am going to try and make the ancient pigment verdigris with this old copper scrap. To begin I need to dissolve it, and I do this by adding concentrated hydrochloric acid and sodium nitrate. When these two are mixed together and heated it will generate a large quantity of nitric acid which can dissolve the copper. The solution was dark with copper oxides and clears up the instant nitric acid is generated. As the copper dissolves toxic nitrogen dioxide is produced, so this must be done under a fume hood. This is allowed to react for 30 minutes until I feel I have enough copper solution. Once it's cooled, I transfer all my dissolved copper to a larger beaker. I rinse the beaker several times to get it all out, and you can see the solution lighten as it's diluted. Once it is left to sit, a layer of insoluble copper 1 chloride settles at the bottom. I'll filter this off and save for later. The green filtrant here is my copper to chloride which I'm next going to neutralize with sodium hydroxide to form insoluble copper hydroxide. While this is happening I'll talk a bit about verdigris. Verdigris is a vivid blue-green color that is responsible for the patination on copper structures such as the Statue of Liberty. Verdigris was also the most vivid greenish paint available up until chrome green viridian in the 19th century. While very light fast in oil medium, other paints made with verdigris have deteriorated and darkened badly over time. Anyway, I just continue to add sodium hydroxide until the pH reaches 7, and then I wait for the solution to turn blue and settle. At this point I decant and filter my copper hydroxide. Once most of the water is gone I transfer it to another beaker and add 30% acetic acid. The addition of acetic acid forms copper acetate, which is verdigris. As it reacts the solution becomes brighter blue. After a few minutes it looks like this, and I'm going to boil it down to half of this volume and filter again. You can see my filtrant is the vivid teal color of verdigris. Once this finished filtering I transferred it to a smaller beaker and boiled it down to around 35 milliliters. At this point it's ready, and I simply pass it through vacuum filtration. And this is my pure verdigris. And it's one of the best looking compounds I've ever made, I know. I'll now crush it up and see how it works as a paint. It seems to work okay, but it is somewhat grainy and not as opaque as many paints. This could be fixed with a muller, but alas I don't own one. Follow for more.